Uh, good evening or good morning, depending on where you might be. I'm Scott Dell, happy to be here and sharing some LinkedIn insights and helping make Monsoon Sim contribute positively to your career. So the title is Keys to Jumpstart Your Career. I will start off and I'm a LinkedIn fanatic and enthusiast and advocate, but I'm also gonna suggest you do the same thing to what I'm doing. Put your LinkedIn URL everywhere. I put it in all my presentations. I put it in my signature blocks. And you can see it right here. Additionally, you do have access to this presentation. There's a tinyurl.com, li and ms keys. If you go to that link on tinyurl, you will get this presentation and have full access. So you don't have to go mad down, jotting down notes as you go. I'm gonna go through a curriculum of reviewing some LinkedIn tricks and tips, and then talking directly about how Monsoon Sim is gonna work. And what we're doing today, we're talking about your career. It's your success, it's your direction. And Monsoon Sim is a powerful contributor can make a big difference, especially on interviews, especially in profiles and resumes as you contribute. But what I'd like to start with is a few Zoom technique items that I'd like to have you talk, have you experience. So you should all be able to click on chat. I'm gonna have you do that now. And go ahead and type your hometown country or country, your expected graduation if you are a student. And if you have it, your LinkedIn URL. I put an example of mine there. Uh, go ahead and please add to that and, and go in chat and make that a accessible so you can go ahead and eventually save the chat. Additionally, I'm gonna have you go into the partner participants icon at the bottom, click on that. There's a more and click a thumbs up if you wanna win a prize. I was told Abdi was giving away things, I'll put them on the spot, but make sure that you can give me a thumbs up and get, get experience Zoom to its fullest. And finally, go on to reactions on the bottom, again, on the same place you see chat, on the same place you see participants, you'll see a reactions icon, and there's something called clapping hands. So go ahead and give yourself a round of applause for getting to be able to complete those things and get things done. One other tip, uh, you can edit your name, you can either right click or click the three dots on your picture and click to rename. And I'm gonna ask for you to put next to your name, your major or your minor or both, of uh, what you are studying, what is your specialty, what is your area of interest. And if even if you're faculty, I'm sure you have a specialty that you teach and that you work in. So please go ahead and edit your name add your majors, minors, interest, and we'll go from there. And the last comment I will say, if you have a question to ask in the chat, please go ahead and select the, or put a question mark before the question. It makes it easier to read the chat. I'll review the chat for Q&A, and I'll give you also a chance to speak your questions verbally, but I wanna make sure that questions get answered and get indicated so it's a little bit easier to see questions if you perceive your question in chat with a question mark. So we'll get going, get started, and we'll get rolling through. So let's start with a survey. And our first poll, our first survey question is, what's your level of knowledge? We're talking LinkedIn. What's your comfort level with LinkedIn? So if you could please respond and talk about, yep, I'm pretty comfortable. Nope, I don't know what I'm doing. Or yeah, I've got an account. I'm kind of getting the hang of it, getting a feel for it. Or Scott, I'll teach this class for you. You can take the rest of the day off. I can go with any direction that you want to go. <laughs> so we're kind of getting a quick survey, another 30 seconds or so, give everybody a chance to answer. Uh, so far, it looks like about half the respondees have an account, but not real active. And then we have a bunch that are pretty, pretty comfortable. I'll, I'll display the results in a minute. I get to see them as they, as they tally though. So we have a couple that are not so sure. My students know the one question that is the answer to anything they ask is F, it depends. My natural follow-up as, as an educator is, okay, you're right, it depends, but it depends on what? So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about it depends, I suspect, in this presentation. 
All right, five more seconds. I'll give you a chance to finish the poll. And we'll end the poll. Three, two, one. And let's go ahead and share the results. So you can see here, a bunch of you are pretty comfortable. You got your good profile, know how to use it. And we're at about the halfway point and you have an account, but you're not an active user. And frankly, that's this national statistic, international statistic. Users that use LinkedIn are fairly active and about half are not active at all. So that is very consistent actually with the, the standards. Recently started using, want to understand more, you're in the right place, glad you're here. Have not yet set up an account, okay? That is encouraged. You want to have a presence, it's a professional social media and people will find you or look for you. And if you don't have an account, it's a reflection. So you want to be careful and make sure you have a, an account about some things to be there. And I'm glad at least 5% of you are on LinkedIn. So congratulations on that. Glad you're able to participate accordingly. All right, so let's keep going. We're gonna go through and why LinkedIn? I always like to start with a why. Oh, it opens doors. People find you. I've had students contacted by Fortune 500 companies here in America, and they've never heard of the company before. But they've been found and they get internships and they get jobs just by being found. It is professional so social media. It's not an Instagram, it's not a Facebook. It is a professional environment and you are a professional. There are professionals, many professional educators on, the, on this call and there are many professional students that want to be more professional in their careers. So you're in the right place. It also will differentiate you. I know when I've done, I've done thousands of interviews, I've been entrepreneurial at a number of businesses. A little more background on me, I'm a full-time academic for 14 years now, but also an entrepreneur. I've had a number of businesses. I used to work for what was called the big eight CPA firms. Now they're down to the big four, the four largest international CPA firms in the world. So I was with EY, Ernst & Young, when I was Arthur Young in, in, in the day. So you are gonna differentiate yourself. You're gonna brand yourself. You're gonna put your image forward and you're gonna be bragging and there's nothing wrong with bragging rights about yourself. You wanna put your best foot forward. And then we're gonna to to talk about first degree connections. First degree, when you connect to me, you and I are first degree connections. All of my connections that you are not directly connected to are now your second degree connections. What the heck does that mean? Well, that means that if I have an HR or a recruiter or somebody looking for somebody that has data analytics skill and can do Tableau and has the ability maybe to do some Python programming, and they're gonna search and they'll say, okay, all my first degree connections are the first in the search. I'll be their first degree, but I'm not a Python guy. I'm not gonna show up. But if you're a second degree connection to me, you're in the next tier. We'll find you by typing in Python, data analytics, and all those keywords. So it pays to connect to people. That's the bottom line. I actually, getting up there in a few years, I don't remember the exact dates I started all my jobs. So it helps me remember. It keeps a tally. To date. <laughs> and then you want to put in regular commitment of time. Maybe you commit 10 minutes a day. It's all about your career. There are 700 million users around the world on LinkedIn. And this is just a, this is when it was 675. You can see about half the United States. Uh, we've got about 325, 330 million, about half are on LinkedIn. But you look over in Hong Kong, over a million. Singapore, over 2 million. Indonesia, over 14 million. Malaysia, Philippines, Australia. It's a global phenomenon. It is globally used and it is powerful to have connections from around the world, a variety of places. I'm gonna play an intro video for you. This is a very, it's a two minute quickie that'll give you some insight and a little bit more upbeat. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this, have it play for you and we'll see what it has to say. Hopefully. Okay, so let's go in, we'll do video and we're on our way. If you're watching this, chances are good you want to get a job. You want to go from student to rising star, and you want to avoid eating the same meal over and over and over again. Good news, you're in the right place. That's right, LinkedIn. It's not just for top executives. It's not just for old people with heavy briefcases. 
It's for you, and it's the perfect place for you to start your professional story. Say you want to get a job in New York City. You've never been there before, but that's okay because you have LinkedIn on your side. You start by creating your profile. You give it love because you know it's what recruiters are looking for day and night. It's your resume that never sleeps. It's your flashing neon sign that says, hire me, hire me, for the love of all that is good in this world, hire me. Then you start making connections. Alumni working in New York? Yes. Recruiters at top companies in New York? Yes. Your mom's best friend? Yes. You start imagining whose shoes you want to walk in. You think, wow, this is a lot of deep stuff to consider. You shake yourself out of it and start searching for jobs. Whoa, that's a lot of jobs for students. Time to get down to business. You start to tailor your profile. You start applying. You feel empowered, in control, like you should be CEO. That gives you an idea. You look up all the CEOs of all the companies you want to work at. You see one of them went to your university. Then it hits you. You see a clear path from campus to career. You feel like you can see the future. You wonder if you're psychic. Should you start a hotline? No, no, back to plan A. You keep tailoring and connecting and applying, and before you know it, you start getting responses. First a few, then more, then an interview, and then you're hired. And that's when the real learning begins. So hopefully that gives you some insight and gives you an idea of the kind of things LinkedIn can do. LinkedIn is, again, a very powerful resource to get you where you want to go professionally. So begin with the end in mind. I'm a real Steve, Stephen Covey fan, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And begin with the end in mind. What is it you want out of life? How about out of career? What direction are you headed? The big question is, what are you willing to do to get there? It's going to take effort. It's going to take commitment. Obviously, you're here. You're making that commitment to being here, to being informed. We want you to think long term. This is a career you're talking about. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And we all mentioned branding before, but branding and image is key to the direction and what foot you're going to place forward for the future. And how do you get to where you want to go? That's what you need to think about. And then you need to execute. So I'm going to give you one more survey question. And this is your monsoon sim experience. So let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, we're going to go through and take a look at our next polling question. Oops, we got that. Question number two and launching. So what's your monsoon sim experience? Please answer more than three years, kind of one to three years, first year, or just getting started, haven't started competing yet. Thank you for your quick response, by the way. You guys are on the job. You guys are on the ball. Pretty good distribution. I'm gonna end the polling in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And we'll end it right there. Share the results and let's see what we've got. First year is about a third, just over a third. And the others are pretty next down is one to three years. About a quarter of you haven't started competing yet. Welcome aboard. This will be my first competition as a facilitator as well this year. So I'm new to the monsoon sim, monsoon sim world. I'm with you. And then more than three years of experience, we got a good contingent here who are pretty well versed and pretty on the ball. And we got 45 respondees, so that was pretty good too. So thank, thank you for your response. Thank you for your feedback. And thank you for your commitment again to be here. So monsoon sim thoughts. Why monsoon sim? I'm gonna get a little bit more background. A number of you are fairly new to As I was, my first exposure was this summer when I was trained. So you're here to learn and have fun. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to get hired. You're getting some pretty good experience. You're getting some pretty good big, big picture of stuff. And then you're developing a bunch of the soft skills. Everybody talks about the hard skills. Yes, I can do Excel. Yes, I can do Microsoft Teams. Yes, I can do Python. Yes, I can program. Yes, I can analyze, but teamwork, business perspective and knowledge, analytics, that's the big buzzword, data analytics, and a friendly competition. You're learning soft skills that are incredibly powerful. I used to be an advisor for the Model United Nations program, and I'm a fan of the UN in a lot of ways and not a fan of the UN in other ways. So we'll have a political discussion someday if you want. But you find that what this does for my students on the Model UN side was amazing. 
they get to go to New York and DC. They meet people from around the world. They get to propose things, public speaking, communication. I'm a big Toastmasters advocate too. Toastmasters is a global organization that people look at to develop some of those communication and leadership skills. I had a student who talked on a half hour interview for 45 minutes about modern United Nations. They didn't talk about their grades. They didn't talk about their courses. They didn't talk about LIFO, light last in first out accounting from that financial accounting class, even though it was exciting to learn. They talked about their modern UN experience for 45 minutes in a 30 minute interview. And yes, that's correct. They talked longer and they got into it and they talked about the things they learned, the things they did and the experiences they had. The interviewer was fascinated. They got the job. And the same thing with Monsoon Sim, you'll end up talking about your experience on your team, the competition, the skills you gained, the analytics that you participated in, and even possibly the titles you had. And that'll make a difference in finding a career, internship, job, whatever direction. Quickly by the numbers, 2012 founded in 10 countries, over 200 universities with over 300 micro concepts with over 80 reports for analysis. You can read the slides as I can led by over 1,100 certified facilitators. Over a thousand of those folks are there, have been trained and are there to help you succeed in using it. And more than 70,000 learners have been here. So you're with a good majority. You're in a good, good crowd. So the competition now entering a sixth year, I was able to, to attend one of the competitions a week and a half ago. It's really exciting, it's, it's fun to watch. And uh, it's even fun to participate in. We're looking forward to our team participating as well. Now in its sixth year, more than 800 clubs, started with over 500 competitors, now over 5,000 competitors. So it's 10 times the size, over 65,000 program alums, more than 28,000 game sessions, 30 million business transactions. I wouldn't mind a buck of transaction, even 10 cents a transaction, thank you. Now on version eight. So making waves, making progress. Sneak preview, two integrations coming soon. One's environmental impact with something called the pollution index. And then together with Deakin University in Australia and Melbourne, integrated reporting, financial capital, human capital, intellectual capital, manufacturing capital, social relationship capital, and natural capital sustainability. So those are some of the things that are coming up in the monsoon sim world you may or may not have heard of, uh, but this is new and fresh off the press. So by December, the environmental impact will be in integrated into the ideas. Let's talk about keywords. One of the key things that you find, no pun intended, in LinkedIn is getting keywords to be searched on. I mentioned somebody that was looking for data analytics with the Python experience and maybe SQL knowledge. Those are things that they will search on. And if you have those keywords in your LinkedIn profile, that's something that you can be found with. Furthermore, once they find your profile, there are words you can use in your resume or LinkedIn profile that gives you either additional capability to have a conversation and interview. Again, I told you when I do interviews, I look for something that's, that's different. Every one of you in school is gonna have a GPA. You're all gonna have a major. You're all gonna have a degree, congratulations. But what differentiates you from the other 100 people or 200 people applying for the role. Well, you're gonna have some volunteer experience. You're gonna have some team experience. You're gonna have some activities that make you unique. And those are the kind of key words. And we look down at concepts, data analytics, financial analysis, some of the capabilities, KPIs, key performance indic indicators, enterprise resource planning, ERP, cash management, and teamwork. What are the buzzwords in your field? If you're accounting and finance, you can have different buzzwords than marketing or management or supply chain or whatever other directions you're pursuing. The categories, you know, if you've been participating in Monsoon Sim, yeah, you're competing B2C, B2B. You got an HR module, you have a production and MRP, material requirements planning modules. You're doing e commerce, service offerings, ERP, asset, asset maintenance. So these are all things that you are competing in during the competitions. These are things you can also add to your resume and LinkedIn profile. Subject areas, I'm looking for someone in human resources or HR. So those are things you're gonna to wanna to have on your profile and have access to, that makes sense. 
you are also a team member. How cool is it to be applying for a finance or accounting position and have the title CFO on your team, chief financial officer, or CEO showing leadership or president or managing partner, or whatever other titles you want. You've got a team of typically four or five people. Standard teams are five, I, uh, that, that's the, the mainstay. So each one of you can have a title. One could be a CTO, chief technology officer. One can be, if, if you're thinking of applying to law school, how powerful is it to be a chief legal officer, CLO? You can make whatever titles you want, it's your team. But those, think of the titles you would want to have for the careers you are considering. So maybe you're going to HR, maybe you wanna be an HR director an HR manager for your team. Well, if you have experience as an HR director or an HR manager and that's on your resume or LinkedIn profile, that's kind of powerful and sets you above somebody else that doesn't have it on their profile. You can be a founder, advisor, you can be a chief cheerleader, you can be whatever you want. In the C-suite, a chief suite role is pretty powerful if you can get a title and work it through with your team. So take advantage of those titles. Word sell makes a difference. The road to success goes in multiple directions. I was gonna take a survey on how many of you just went in here and won your first competition. How many of you never made a mistake when you were competing on Monsoon Sim? How many of you never made a mistake in life? If you're a baseball fan, you know that a batting average of 500, even half time right is unheard of. If you're doing 300, you're doing great, all right? It's, we, we talk about how Michael Jordan talks about how, well, actually, is Wayne, he missed all the shots he didn't take. Michael Jordan misses more basketball hoops than he gets. When you're taking shots, you give it your best shot. I learned more from my failures, and I've had quite a few from my successes, which I've also had a number. You learn from both. But what happens on your team? Think about the bad things you thought were bad, and maybe they're not so bad. Maybe there was a miscommunication. Maybe you spent all your money, you ran out of cash, and you, you thought you bought something, and your, sh your shelves are empty. Or you were trying to produce something, and you couldn't afford the raw materials to make what you needed to produce to make to sell. How about missed opportunities? How about the emotional intelligence you're developing by working with your team? and being sensitive and having those conversations while you're competing. It's a team effort. How about your work ethic? Employers love a strong work ethic. You always give your work to somebody who's busy, not because it makes them busier. It's because these are people that are busier and getting things done. Those that aren't getting things done, they kind of put it by the wayside. I'll do it later. You want to get things done. The soft skills, which are so hard to get and so important, you build as a team. Understanding interactions and constraints, considerations with other departments. So everybody wants the money to invest. You want to expand your warehouse. You want to go ahead and stock your shelves. You want to go ahead and buy some machines. You want to go ahead and hire some new people. All of this takes money. Well, you need to coordinate that. Key performance indicators, awareness of KPIs. That's a buzzword out there. And in your interview, would you rather talk about your GPA or your experiences? And by the way, when you can talk about your experiences excitedly, of what you've done, that's pretty contagious. And by the way, smile every time you're interviewing. Whatever you're saying, always smile. So what do you need to do on LinkedIn? First of all, you wanna take it seriously. It's only your career. What direction are you headed? I mentioned at the beginning, include your LinkedIn URL everywhere, college applications, job applications, in your emails, in your signature blocks. Right next to your email address at the top of your resume, should be your LinkedIn URL. It, they'll go and find it anyways. So you may as well give it to them, but it also sets you apart. I'm a CPA. I will go into the CPA pile, which is a little bit higher than the non-CPA pile if I'm applying for an accounting job. I'll go into the professional social media aware when I have my LinkedIn URL on my resume versus when I don't. You wanna make connections like crazy. Now, some people say, I only wanna to connect to people I know and can talk to, and there's a school of thought that says you have an intimate, close relationship with all your connections. But frankly, you only have maybe 50 or 100, maybe 150 if you're pretty much of a networker at that point and you're close. Now, 
I'm not saying go out and get 20,000 or 30,000 connections, but I am saying you want to be open to connecting. So connect like crazy. That's my, that's my suggestion. Other people will say, don't connect to Pope you don't know. And that, that's okay. It's, it's your profile. It's your direction. It's your commitment of what you want to do. But I will say I will err in favor of connecting to somebody rather than shying away from it. And then if they, within 30 minutes of connecting say, and have I got a business opportunity for you? I'm looking for somebody in the US that can handle our payroll. Okay, then I will unconnect. I will turn them off. I don't want to be pitched out of the gate, but I don't mind expanding because my students will now have second degree connections to HR managers from around the world, to CEOs, to other professionals in the field, to academics. And those are the folks I'll connect to without reservation, without question. Dress to impress. Unless you're going to be a vet, you don't want a dog in your photo with you. Unless you're a real estate team, uh, you and a significant other or husband and wife, you don't want to have a second person in the photo unless that's part of your business. You don't want to be wearing a Harley t-shirt unless you're a Harley tech and you want to work for Harley or work at a dealership. So again, professional photo is where it's at. What do people wear for the job you are going to be pursuing? And there's nothing wrong with being professional. You need to be professional. You're expected to be professional. Now you can use it. What does LinkedIn do for you? Well, before an interview, you can see who you're going to talk to. You can see where they're from. You can see if they've been on the job for three months or for 30 years. And they'll have different perspectives. And you can kind of integrate that. So it looks like you've been here over 10 years. What have you seen change in those 10 years? And say, how do you know I've been here 10 years? They'll figure out that you looked at their profile and you did your due diligence. You did your homework. Whenever you meet people, now I'll tell you, I just wrote down six names from the screens here of faculty members and people I see that I'm going to invite to connect after this session. So I practice what I preach. You're gonna have access to the chat. I'm gonna recommend you save the chat. Everybody who has a URL, obviously they have a similar interest because you're all interested here in your career in LinkedIn or Monsoon Sim or all of the above. Those are the people you probably want to connect with and you want to share with. So if you go into chat down below where it says everyone file and there's three dots on the three dots, you click on the three dots, it'll say save chat and you can save the chat and have all those LinkedIn, pro, LinkedIn URLs that I asked people to insert before. You want to change your URL name at professionalism. Mine is Dr. Scott CPA. I am a CPA. Yeah, I'm a doctor as of last December, actually a newly minted doctor. I've got two masters and then I'm a lifelong learner and I'm, I promote that. I set the example, I encourage it. But I've also been very entrepreneurial for businesses. So Dr. Scott CPA, that's how I'm branding. That's easier to remember for a lot of people. And if you call me Dr. Scott or Scott or professor or whatever you wanna call me, just don't swear at me. We're all good. You wanna highlight your awards. It's time to brag. And the question here is if you don't brag, you don't promote yourself, who will? It's not an ego thing. It's, I, had, I got the educator of the year in 2018, for the state of Wisconsin. Cool. How are you going to know that? Well, I just told you that. I put it on my profile. I published a book on LinkedIn last June. How do I do that? Well, I've got that on my LinkedIn profile. All these things in the conversation, I'm happy to share with you and talk about. But if you see it on the profile, people are going to do their homework the same way you will do your homework before your interview, after your interview, and you're going to connect like crazy. Keywords are king and queen. Don't want to be sexist about it. You want to get keywords on your profile. You want it on your resume, these automated tracking systems, the ATSs, they're going to look for keywords. LinkedIn profiles, they look for keywords. Anybody searching looks for keywords. I often get the question, should I pay for LinkedIn or can I use a free account? I got over 18,000 connections with a free account. I now have a paid account. I've had a few more since then. I got, but... I need it for professionally what I do, and it gives me a few more search terms, a few more capabilities. And to me, it's worth it. But until then, until I actually started paying for it, I was doing fine with a free account. There's nothing wrong with not having to pay. So I urge you, encourage you, everything that I did with up to 18,000 plus first three connections, you can do too with a free account. Very easy to do. Quickly on your profile, your picture is your first impression. And you really do want a picture. It's been shown that folks that have pictures get connected more, appeal, appeal more, 
and appear to be more professional. Keep your name clean, certification's okay. Officially, you'll see my name, I've got a symbol next to it. I've got a couple, of, I've got some certifications next to it. Those are things that LinkedIn will tell you, it's not in our agreement that you can do that, but most people seem to do it and it seems to be okay. Headlines gonna be clear and concise, but always from the perspective of your potential employer or where you wanna be. WIFM, what's in it for me? And that's the reader's benefit. You put, hi, I'm a student, I'm a senior, or whatever, that's good. that'll tell you a little bit about yourself. But if you say, I am a data analytics and Python professional seeking opportunities with large organizations or whatever you're going to say, you want somebody to look at that and say, oh, that, that's us. That's a good fit. Now, you don't want to antagonize anybody and, not, and isolate folks. You got to be careful. But you don't want to say, my title, well, I was a quick order chef over at McDonald's, or I was a server. And these are all good jobs. Maybe I was a manager. Maybe I was a VP. Those are titles. You really don't want your title in there. You really want what you're looking to do or what you can do in there. In your summary, it used to be uh, Dr. Scott was very interested in and has the capability of. Now it's I. There's nothing wrong with I and me. And you want I in that summary area. In your experience and accomplishments, you discuss what impact you had and what impacted you. If you look at my profile, and I, I do this a little differently, I have the why in every one of my jobs and every one of my educational experiences. I start with the why. Why was I there? Why was I doing do what I was doing? What was I excited about? So I start with the why. But other people, and you want to quantify. I trained 20 people to do this. I oversaw 15 this. I increased whatever by 20%. You want to quantify. And then you want your activities and skills, endorsements, and I'll mention recommendations specifically. You want to write recommendations for others, and you want to receive recommendations. You can ask. You can ghostwrite it. You can say, I'm looking for a recommendation. Here's an idea of what I'm looking for, and have them post to your profile. Because viewers of your profile see both the recommendations that are given about you or to you and the recommendations that you give to others. And if you write well-designed recommendations, that shows your command of the language is pretty good. It's pretty strong. So let's go to survey question number three, okay? Let's go see and ask the question, what would you be using LinkedIn for? So I'm gonna ask the question of, actually that was the, I, I didn't share the results, did I? I must have, okay. And let's go to survey question three. Yeah, I did go there. Let's go to survey question three. Apologize for any confusion. And answer the following question. I will be using LinkedIn to help me find a job, build my brand, research people and companies, network, stay connected with friends and colleagues. Ah, uh, it depends. Or all of the above. And you can change your answer. You're not married to one answer if you don't want to. I was going to make it multiple answers, but I'd like to see what, what your leanings are and what your directions are. We'll give it another five seconds. Four, three, two, one. And we'll end the polling and share the results. Number one, almost half of you want to find a job or internship. Well, as you heard in that first video, you're in the right place. Build my brand. I, I like that answer because you are branding yourself. And this is a lifelong commitment. Research. Wow, that's excellent. 20% research. Networking. Yep, it's a forum for networking. That was the num number three answer. Stay connected, friends and colleagues. By the way, this is a great place. Anybody over the age of 25 probably recognizes the term a Rolodex. This is a great place to store all your contacts. Rather than having to remember all addresses and they change jobs, where they're working today. Oh, I can jump in and jump through and run through and quickly send out a communication to three, four, five of my contacts. It depends. Good answer. I always like it depends. And all of the above. I think all of the above is quite appropriate uh, where we're going. All right. So thank you for your input. Thank you for your direction. And I have, I'm actually going to open the floor. I'm going to talk about a couple of things. 
there's an alumni search feature. And actually, I'm going to quickly demonstrate that. And let me go in and show you. And I'm going to go specifically to quick security check. I don't know why they're checking my security. I'm a real person. And if they do that for too long, I'm going to go ahead and cut out. Verify. Spiral galaxy, far, far away. Okay. All right. So if I go in here and I can search, and hopefully you can all see Hong Kong Polytech University. And I went in here and I want to see alumni. And it wants me to sign in again. It's okay. Love those live demos. So I here, I'm down here, home about life, jobs, alumni. There are over 97,000 alums currently, and hopefully you can all see my screen. There are 97,046 alums from Hong Kong Polytech on LinkedIn. I can see where they live. I can see where they work. I can scroll down. I can see they're at PwC, PricewaterhouseCoopers, EY, my alma mater, Cathay Pacific Airways, Hong Kong Singapore Bank Corp, HSBC, Hong Kong Polytech, a lot of them at the, at the university, working part-time, full-time, Bank of China. So let's say you're thinking about working for EY. So I go to EY, I click on EY. What's cool is I now know where they're at. If I'm looking at the 12 in the United States, or maybe I'm thinking of Norway, or looking at China, maybe I'm going to go over to China. I click on China. Now I have all the way down 28 people here that will show up. Most of them have pictures that are working in China. Now I want to go in and I say, you know what? You're my alma mater. Here we go. I've got a partner at EY. So let me go see Bennett, what he's about. Okay. So I've never met Bennett before, but I'm going to go take a look at Bennett's profile and see what we've got. So he's a partner. Okay, that's kind of cool. He's been in China 16 years. He was at PwC prior to that, University of Warwick, and Hong Kong Polytech. So I could go ahead and say, and I'll, I'll do it. You want to add a note every time, Bennett. As a fellow EY alum, I would be honored to be at your LinkedIn professional network. Appreciation of your consideration. So just don't hit connect. Always type something, communication, go direct. And will it connect with me? I don't know. You probably, as a student, can get away with a lot more. You can go in and say, I'm a student. I'd love to set up a 15 minute conversation to talk to you about public accounting, about working at EY, about working with a big four CPA firm. But you look at all these people, but one graduated in 2015. One graduate is graduated in 19, a recent grad. One in 15 here again, one in 18 in different fields. Staff accountant, 18. So you have the power to see a whole bunch of things and there's 28 alum that are working in China if I was gonna go over to China. And I've been to China and I'll probably come back again. So you get the idea, you've got a lot of horsepower in finding these things. Let me just take you how you might do a search. If I go in and let's sign in again. Let me show you how I got, to, we're gonna go back to that. I'm gonna go home. You can get information about any institution, any company, any organization. But look up universities, look up colleges. It's pretty powerful. It's a pretty amazing arena to do your searches and find things. All right, let's go ahead on down to search options. Some of the things LinkedIn lets you do on a title. You can add the word marketing or VP marketing if you're into marketing. Or put an audit if you're looking for an auditor. Locations, companies, schools, what, where do they go to school? Industries, language, 
connection level. Some other things, when you search, you can get names of people, you can search by company, by specific schools, by specific content, by groups, by events. And I'm gonna encourage groups in a minute because groups are a place and you all should be able to see that we have a monsoon sim LinkedIn group. And that group you would be most encouraged to participate in and to join. That's where we're putting up tips and tricks. There's a half a dozen search capabilities, everything from working with applicant tracking systems to working through and other hints and tips on when looking for jobs. So join groups and become an authority by commenting in groups. Networking basics. Yeah, there's some things about networking you should be aware of. A lot of people aren't real comfortable with networking, but you really want to be able to have that elevator pitch, have that story about yourself when asked, tell me about yourself, when asked, so what, so what, what are you doing here? Why do you want to work for us? You want to be able to relate your personal story of why you're a good fit to what they do. And I mentioned something called the 15 minute ask. You want to be able to reach out, talk to somebody and say, hi, I'm a student at your alma mater. Do you have 15 minutes you might be able to spare to talk to me? Now I'll give you an example. I, I, I've owned a couple of companies. I had a company out in Wisconsin. We had three locations and I'd occasionally get calls. Sometimes I get a call from a student saying, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Dell, you've been pretty successful in your entrepreneurship and your activities and you got a pretty good company over there. I'm a student at XYZ University. Do you have some time? Maybe we can get together and talk. And you say, you know what? Tell you what, I'll take you out for lunch next week. How about Tuesday or Wednesday? And I'll take out student for lunch. Day after you graduate, I'll get that same call. Uh, uh, Mr. Dell, you've got a pretty successful company. I'm graduating from XYZ University. Do you have a few minutes to talk? I said, well, oh, you must want to talk to HR, human resources. Let me patch you through. Bang. That was a short conversation because you now are a graduate and congratulations on your graduation. But you are now in a different category looking for a job. And it's obvious where as a student, I obviously interact with lots of students and I really get turned on and excited by being able to share experiences and hopefully inspire students in different directions. Obviously, I'm here. But those are opportunities you have as a student that you can get away with a lot of things. And also, when you apply for an internship, maybe you're applying with 50 or 100 people competing versus applying for a job with 500 or 1,000 people competing. You're on a better, better footing to get an internship. It's about helping others for networking. Give before you get. So I'd like to share with you, and if somebody requests, give them a network and say, I know somebody at this company you, you might want to connect with. They do something we just talked about you might ex might explore. I was from Madison, Wisconsin. An insurance agent bumped into. I said, oh, I've got some people I know that have a need. You might want to talk to them about they're, they're doing going green and investing. And they have a seminar coming up. So I, I, I relayed a name. I said, here, talk to this person, friend of mine. Invite people to connect. He talked about it. Get to the magic 500 number in LinkedIn. It says 500 plus. That shows you're connected. It shows you are an active LinkedIn user. If you have 12 connections on LinkedIn, it says, yeah, you're plugged in. And maybe you've got a great profile, but you're not really promoting it. You're not branding it. You're not pursuing it. And do I invite people I don't know? It depends. That's a conversation we talk about. And yep, the give before you get. Thank you for annotating that. I didn't, but that's, you're right. You want to give, give it away. And you can start now. That's part of what you want to do. As the old Chinese proverb, the best time to plant a tree, plant a tree was 25 years ago. The second best time is now. When do you want to network? You want to network now. Go for it. There are some videos on there too. Meet your future fellow alumni. Chance to chat. We'll talk more about things. And I'm going to ask in the chat right now, again, your LinkedIn URL. As a matter of fact, if you go to your profile and you cut control C, cut and paste it, you want that HTTP so it's a linkable link. You just put www, it doesn't highlight, it's not easy to click on. But if you are able to and go to your profile, copy the URL from your profile and put it in the chat. I'll again, ask you to do that now. Some of you weren't here when I asked originally when you started. In the chat, put two specific action I'm going to take to succeed with LinkedIn. And put a question mark in front of two more things I would like to know more about LinkedIn. So I'll give you a chance to enter the chat. 
And in a minute, I'm going to open the floor for questions. I'm going to have you come off mute and I'll answer questions directly first and then I'll review chat to see if there's anything else you want to talk about. But that's the basic of where we are. There's a safety and security. Yeah, you got to be careful. Why worry about strangers? You can read that later on. And I'm going to go through a question four. But go ahead and finish your chat of the two things you're going to do right now, two actions you're going to take and the two questions you still have. While we're doing that, I'll open another survey question. Last one, launch a poll. What was the best part of today's seminar for you? Gained insights, realize the power of monsoon sim. It's gonna help me in my job and career search. Inspired me to take action, do something. Oh, I love it. Action's powerful. Cool. Okay. And we've got 33 respondents so far. We've got 37 rising up to over 40. Thank you. 43. We're getting about 45 responses each time. Five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and polling. Share results. Congratulations. You're now inspired to take action. I'm, that, that, that's powerful. And I'm, I appreciate you sharing that. But this is about you. It's about your success. And the next was gain in, insights on LinkedIn. Cool. That's you. You're, in the, you, you, you're here. You're right. The power of Monsoon Sim. It really is a powerful resource for you. And it's going to help you in your job and career search. And career long term. So congratulations in your success, in your participation. And I'm gonna open the floor to questions, aspirations, inspirations. And I don't know how your English is, but I didn't even know the word phantasmagorias when I started a few years ago when I found the word. I thought it was a great word to use in a question slide. So that's not a common word in English, phantasmagorias. Many of you are not native English speakers and that's okay, but, it's a, but it is a real word. But inspirations, insights, I'm sure you're on the right track and where we're at. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and reinforce the tinyurl.com slash li and ms keys. You can find this presentation. I see one question in the chat. Thank you for putting a question mark before that. What can you write up if you don't have a lot of experience? And that's a really good question because a lot of my students, they're saying, I, I, I haven't done a lot, but think about it. You actually have. Have you done any class projects? Have you been a team member? Have you done any analysis? Have you written any papers? Even projects that you didn't want to write, but you had to write. Did you do something? Do you work? Do you volunteer? Now volunteer experience is golden because it shows you're committed to doing other things above and beyond. There's another thing called MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses. You can get an IBM badge on your LinkedIn profile and put in your resume by taking a two hour LinkedIn course on blockchain. Just do, an, just do a Google search, blockchain, IBM course. And you will find a course that you can take for free and now you can put that on your resume in your LinkedIn profile and you have, you'll earn a, earn a badge to do that. So if you're going into IT, do you think the name IBM is recognized? I, I think so. How about PwC? They offer a data analytics four core sequence. Now that one costs, it's like $72, $79 per course. But if you're looking into accounting or finance and you put PwC on your resume, that's pretty powerful. Data analytics on your resume, even more powerful. Even if you never worked for PwC, it's a course. You can take a Wharton course or a Stanford course. I went to Wharton, all right? They offer courses online and either $79, $99 or free that you can now say Wharton on your resume or Stanford or Harvard if you like. Now I'm from originally from Boston, so I can say Harvard. But when you get Harvard on your resume, it gets recognized. So does Oxford. So does Hong Kong Polytech University. Those are things you can put and take a free class. University of Wisconsin has a MOOC on the science of making beer. 
Okay, cool class, but it's the science of making beer. So it is a free course, something you can get a certificate in and you can have a resume stuffer. And they had a lot of folks, that one you may not want to put on your resume so fast, but all the other ones I mentioned are pretty powerful, are pretty cool. Okay, other questions. Any conferences you've attended? And you want to attend activities. You want to put your monsoon sim experience on there. And what did you learn? How did you participate? Why did you get involved? And what did you accomplish while you were on your team? And even if you didn't place first, you still have an experience in what you learned in the things you did on how to work together as a team. With my four other classmates, we went ahead and we were first in this category. You may not have been first, but we were first in profitability or first in production or supply chain, or we had the best managed HR department. And if you were the HR manager and had the best managed HR department, even though you lost the competition, that's pretty cool. That's pretty powerful. Yes, that's very Sure, cool. I'll go ahead and take in your complete guide to succeeding with LinkedIn. I'm, I'm, I'm not shy. It's a pretty comprehensive guide, an 85 step guide to effectively utilizing LinkedIn as a tool. And it's a step-by-step. -step. First 18, if you're a newbie, or 19 on, if you have an established, even a basic profile, it's kind of useful and handy. And it gives a lot yeah. of tips and tricks as to where to go. So the, yeah. Amazon as well. And it's, this is what we there's one more question. You asked for two more questions. There was something called LinkedIn jail. And I'm gonna make a quick comment on that. Yes. You probably heard the term, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than for permission. And I'll give you an example of sometimes to expand my network. If I attend the American Accounting Association International Conference, AAA, and it has an international audience, and I go ahead and I get a listing of the 2,500 people that are attending. And I say, you know what? I recognize a bunch of folks that I'm connected to. I'm pretty well connected into accounting faculty and business faculty. And I say, I'm gonna go like, like a mad dog and try to connect. I will go in and 200 connections later, I'll get locked out by LinkedIn. LinkedIn jail is a lockout that says it's a protection. They don't want you mask going after crazy and inviting a thousand people to connect. That's only temporary. It'll come back and a couple of days later, they say, they'll say, your account restricted. You've, you've hit your limit on invites. And once you hit that limit, you can't invite anybody else. People can invite you, you can't invite them. But then you go one step further and you know, 24 hours later, 48 hours later, it'll come back and you can go invite another 200 people, 300 people if you like. So don't be afraid to pursue and reach out. The other thing is if you ask too many people that you don't know to connect and they say, I have no idea who you are, they will block you and make you type in an email address. I've had that offense too. I used to have to, have to type in an email address every time I invited someone to connect. And a first offense or even a second offense, because it happened to me twice, they reversed that as I requested it. I said, I'm an academic, I connect to my students, I yada yada and professionals, I wanna help them link to other professionals and they reverse that. And the key is when you send out an invite, personalize it. Don't just say connect, 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 connect. That's, 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 that's gonna get you a lot of, I don't know you, I don't know you, I don't know you, bye. But you say connect, I'm a student, excited about the, the profession of supply chain, and I've been doing analysis, and I see that you are at a company that works in the field, and I'd be very interested in connecting with you as a fellow professional. Thank you for your consideration. I don't know very many people that would refuse an invite like that. And if they do, I really, I don't connect with people I don't know. And I've had people tell me that, and then they set up an appointment with me. They have a conversation with me on my Calumly link, and then they connect with me after they talk to me. Because some people, that's fine. They're not going to connect to someone they've never talked to in their network. And I respect that too. That, that's a personal choice. So go ahead and feel free to take advantage and to be somewhat aggressive. You may not feel you want to be aggressive and talk to strangers. You always taught growing up, don't talk to strangers. That's what, that's what we're always taught. We're taught to fear strangers. I'm saying, yes, you can fear, but it's an appropriate fear. And general fear of strangers is, I think is inappropriate, but a legitimate fear, a security concern and awareness is appropriate. So, and you can always 
disconnect from somebody you connected to that you don't want to deal with anymore. So didn't want to address that question. That was the other question I think I saw asked about. Any other questions? Uh, I'll throw in the chat, the link to my Amazon profile. That's the author profile. And if you click on that, it'll take you to the book. There's a large print edition and a, a regular print edition. And it is available directly around the world through Amazon. So thank you for asking. It's now in the chat, Zoom chat. All right, so <laughs> thank you. I can see a very nice uh, in LinkedIn. All right, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.